Hi, welcome to Laura B. Gardening. It's June 1st today and it's um, our tour day for my garden. I wanted to show you all the things that are blooming and things that are kind of starting to fade away. Um, it has been a really cold day, so it's been overcasted for many weeks. So that's why I'm not wearing a sun hat or um, any other kind of cover up, but I do have sunscreen on my face. So let me show you around to show you what's in bloom and um, things that are bursting up. So I have here, I don't know the variety of this one. My husband actually chose this one. He loves Dahlia. So she's kind of a purple Dahlia, kind of a painted purple Dahlia. Maybe there's a name down here. Let's see. Oh, there is. Um, she is, okay, Lavender Ruffles. So she's a Lavender Ruffles. My husband loves, loves his Dahlias. And there we go. What do you think, Ocean? Is she good? Yep, she's a good Dahlia. Then we have the Bacopa that's really loving life right now. So she's really spread out and trailing. And this is the first time I've actually have had her trail that low. I usually, um, by now, she starts to fizzle out and get really small. But like I said, it's been a lot of um, overcast and kind of like in the 60s for many weeks. And I overplant or actually overplanted some of these. Uh, Oh my goodness, um, golden leaves, uh, ooh, golden leaves, bacopa, and a variegated climbing or ground cover ivy. And then these, is it gyphilias? So that's the, the pink, the gypsy pink. And then of course our beautiful weeping birch tree. And look at her, she finally took off. This is the uh, crimson red or crimson queen maple. And oh my goodness, she finally took off. Look at her. I think this is where she doesn't get as much sun. So it's a little green on this area. So it kind of complements all these beautiful colors down here with the rose begonia, all the Rex begonias. Love that. And then this is a arabian jasmine and she has like little rosettes in fact you can see her starting to open and she smells so good so she i planted her right by the uh, kitchen window so when i have the kitchen window open oh, you could really smell her so i can't wait till she starts to open all her blooms and it gets nice and fragrant around here around the little gazebo area so la, look at that the climbing edens have burst they are absolutely magnificent look at them oh my gosh we have waited and my husband and i have like counted every bud and it's just been so delightful to see all her glory of all these beautiful sweet roses look at that come get closer to this come here look at her oh my gosh that's the perfect rose what more could you ask for that is god's beauty right there oh. So here we are in the healing garden. And um, I moved a couple of these dusty millers right in the front because they were in the back. So we moved those to the front. And then um, I added this kind of the fern like, I think it's called Gypsophilia. And this is a deep rose. Put those in the front to just kind of soften the area. And of course, our beautiful, they're called red delphiniums. And they are kind of a corally salmon color. Let me see what is happening with my dog. He is not happy at all. Let me check. Huh. I'm not sure where he's at. Oh. What are you doing down there, mister? Come on, come on out. Come on out. These are not to eat. Come on, let's go. Oh, right. Oh, dear Lord. Jiminy crickets. Okay. And that's the puppy, like I said. So he's still learning a lot. So let's finish the uh, healing garden. Sorry about that. So come on in. Like I said, the beautiful delphiniums. Oh, those are so beautiful. They just burst and just so bright, vibrant in this area. And then I planted this valerian red 
which is really good for fillers and bases. And look at all her tiny little flowers, just make one big bloom, so pretty. And let's see, we're, oh, the agapanthas are getting ready to um, burst. So they're in waiting, so you can see, they're like, okay, let's get some sun. Let's get some sun. And I think there's another one here. Oh, look, 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 look. She's just cup, maybe another week. If we had sun, she would have been open by now. But look at that. Wow, oh, yay, and they're all white, so they look like little fireworks in here. It's so pretty. Um, so many of you have give, given me great ideas um, of where to put the rose, and I actually decided to put her here, and this is why. So I'm gonna move this because it's in the way. I bought this trellis, and I'm gonna put her on this side because if I put her along the fence, or excuse me, the brick, she um, is gonna be in the way of the walkway. So I don't want to, I wanna make sure we have a clear walkway to walk through the garden and not have any branches coming out just like these, but I'll cut these down once it's done. Um, so I am gonna be putting her there. We're happy. It's a nice trellis, it's nice and large and width. So we'll just keep her confined right here and look really pretty. And now, so now, I displaced another plant. I have no idea where I'm going to put her, but we'll figure that out in the next couple of days. So come on over here. Look at that. Look at that. Oh my gosh. Oops, except for those right there, but that's okay. Look at that. Ugh. The climbing Eden is so beautiful. And they get sun all day, except when it's overcast. So come on down the um, Green Mountain Foxwoods. Look at that. They're looking beautiful. Almost almost fake. Their green is so pretty and so kind of just almost like they're fake plants. <laughs> and I put these baby tears here, the isotomas. Well, blue kind of stomped on that one, but that's okay. I think it'll do okay. They're starting to grow in. They're starting to spread a little bit. You could tell they're starting to grow their little Right, little zones here, or whatever you call these little guys. Rhizomes, I believe. <laughs> and that's my other dog. Um, so that's looking really sweet. I just bought these um, alyssums, and this is the snow crystal alyssums. So I want to put them right underneath the boxwoods. And the effect I'm trying to do, um, which was beautiful the last two years in a row, is they grow so big that they cascade over the brick, and it's it's so beautiful that, again, it looks like snow, but it's just a beautiful white carpet of the alyssums right here. So I'm still going to be planting those in. I haven't planted my Mother's Day. I'm sorry, Jade. I haven't planted my Mother's Day uh, pot with all the flowers, but I'll do that soon because I need to drill the pot and I need to find that bit and I haven't been able to find it. So we'll be doing that soon, hopefully. Okay. We have a Dahlia coming up, and she's the Cafe Olay. She was from last year, I got her on sale. So I'm really excited to see all her blooms. And then, aha, we have the Coco Loco Rose. See, handy dandy pruners. Let's go right there. The Coco Loco Rose. So she was in full bloom a couple of weeks ago, but she'll burst out again. So here's one little sweet bud kind of almost mirrors the color of the delphiniums in the healing garden. So that is just beautiful. And then here we go. Oh, look at her. This is the flamethrower red bud. She now completely leafed out and this is how she'll look. So fall where she'll, she's going to lose all her leaves. And look, just magnificent. Oh, look at that. Look at these colors. Oh, so beautiful. So beautiful. So let's come on over here. Just watch your face and your head. <laughs> All right. Okay, here we go. So we have the little, I put some climbing jennies here. Again, to soften up that brick. I finally planted the or non-stop bright begonias so we have the begonias here 
And I haven't planted these yet, but these are called um, aerodem, aerodems, and it's bishop form. So these grow about two to three feet, eight to 10 inches in like length. And then these, I believe, are called trifolums, trifolums, um, kind of a uh, four green leaf. I'll tell you that. I have the name on the other side, so we'll look at that in just a second. So that's finally, I'm hoping that fills in. Oh, look at this begonia here. Look at that. Oh my God, she's so huge. Oh no. Now look at that. Oh, she's so pretty. We'll just put her here. There you go. Look at that. We never would have known. And some more bacopas, the golden leaves. And here's another tri tri trifolum. Yes, trifolum. And it's called a four luck green, green glow, green glow. Yeah. So look at these tiny little leaves. Look at how sweet. So they like partial shade. And this is the perfect area for them to spread and be happy. Mm hmm. And then we have over here our hellebores. And these are just now faded blooms, but they still look so neat and just give it that extra texture in the garden. And then look at this. Da -da! The Coco Loco. This one's doing so well. Look at those. And you could smell from right here. Oh my goodness. Look at that. Look at look at this one. So they start in different stages so the stage here is kind of that antique color antique almost beige i would say or mocha like a mocha soft mocha and then they get the age to a lavender oh and then to the side here here's our bistro area everything's happy all the uh, lemon cypress or the william goldcrest cypress excuse me are happy and doing really good everything's really happy here we haven't been able to sit out here much just because it's been so cold and um just actually kind of sprinkling so we've had a lot of moisture in the air so i'm dealing with a lot of slugs and a lot of slugs and um a lot of um mildew so i'm constantly every week on that um so you'll see the slug go down it's a little kind of a mildewy down there that's just the sluggo that i'm putting down so the slugs don't eat all my plants so come on up here so here we have this little peninsula everything's looking really good here you guys it's june 1st and we still have pansies this is so abnormal look at that look at these blue beautiful pansies oh my goodness and then i planted these i think they're called um uh aguilar sky blue i'm not sure they're okay they could be blue but i see more purple so these are down here okay and then a let's put an angelonian this is going to be pink so this is purple um the pin cushion's purple the delphinium is a lilac and then that's going to be pink and that's going to look really nice once it all grows in see that and there goes its little butts Again, look, I'm just amazed. Look at these pansies. Look at the white pansies and the violas. Again, June. Oh my God, who would have known? Look at how beautiful. And then the hydrangeas. And those are Mother Teresa hydrangeas. Microphilia hydrangeas. This is the first year they are doing wonderful. Look at this bush here. Look at this hydrangea. They have been dealing with rust, and I really stayed on top of these last year when they went dormant, make, made sure that it was always treating them with the rust. And look, look at the blooms back there. Oh my gosh, she's gonna look so beautiful. So again, lots of pansies, violas, my delphinium, she's kind of on a little rest period right now. Let's come on over here. And then these are the salvias. I think these are called skyrocketed salvias. So those, I'm gonna cut those back a little bit down. So flush out a new bloom. Woo! And then we have, we have, look at this. Look at this mm, huge ornamental kale. Come over this way so you can see this one. Look at 
Look at her. Oh my gosh, really? Oh wow, and look at this. The really soft colors, lots of whites. These salvias, I'm gonna have to cut down. They're struggling with um, mildew right now. So I've tried spraying them. They're not having much luck. So I'm just gonna bring them down, spray them, and just hopefully they'll rejuvenate and pop up all that white color. So got more of those, gyps, gyps, oh, what is it? What did I say? Gyps, gypsophilia, but the white ones. So these are called gypsy white. Just to soften up this area here. Doesn't look pretty. And look on the other side of that arbor is a pretty and pink Eden. Look at her. Oh, she's, this is her second season. So she's a little softer. She's not as a vigorous grower as the climbing Eden, but she's getting there. She's pushing her bloom. She's happy. She's like, look, I'm happy. I'm going to show you these beautiful blooms. So there we go. The happy blooms on the pretty and pink um, climbing Eden. And then here, which I need a dead head. I guess I could do that now, but I think I would bore you guys to death. Um, is the, what is it? Um, Carol Lewis. Oh my goodness. I'll have to kind of link that, the name of it. Carol Lewis, or I'm not sure. I'm sorry. I don't remember. So I showed you these. Oh my God. This is the, um, Princess Charlene, Princess of Monaco. Look at her petals. Look at that. That is the most amazing rose that I have here. She is just glorious. That's an older bloom there. So you can see her middle right there. And this is a new more bloom. Mm -hmm. And then all the baby poppies that are kind of pushing out, they're still happy. And look at this tiny little bitty petite poppy right there. She's so sweet. I do want to show you this. And this is something I saw in the garden today when I was out here this morning. And it's just amazing how everything's so happy, but also kind of off its growing season. Look at this. In the middle of this sedum, look at the little viola, the little lavender viola. She's like, here I am, guys. I'm right here. I'm still happy. Isn't that sweet? Love it. So if you stand here and look at the garden from this side, come on over here. And I'm going to show you this. I'm going to show you my vista from this point of view here. Look at that. Oh, she's so pretty. The climbing Edens in full bloom. The pretty and pink Edens. And everything looks so pretty. All right, so, oh, lamium. But remember I was telling you guys that I'm dealing with slugs. Oh, these slugs are just, they're resistant to all sorts of things now because I've put many different types of, I put sluggo, I put um, eggshells. I've done all sorts of, tried as organic as possible to get rid of them, but I find them on the grass and, okay, and I kind of come and step on them, I'm sorry, because I don't want them killing my plants, so. I'm having an issue with the slugs because it's so moist. And here's my little shade garden. Everything looks so pretty. Now I haven't planted the um, Cape, what were they called? Cape fuchsia. So I haven't had an opportunity to do that. But here's an Annabelle and it's a ruby red Annabelle. She's already starting to flower. Look at that. She starts with a kind of a mauve and then starts to get a little silvery. So pretty. And then I got that hydrangea from my mom maybe like three years ago. And she's finally flowering. So she's very happy this year here. And look at the slugs. You can see all the sluggo, how it's getting all mildewy. Those slugs, they don't give up. My poor Brunera. Look at that. They have, it's a holy Brunera. So really sad. My Coley is here. Um, I'll have to look up the variety I don't remember and then my limelight this is my hydrangea standard not standard excuse me limelight see this is the one that gets six to eight feet tall so she'll not wait for her to just cover this area in white blooms so she's getting there I've not planted my honeysuckle 
because um, I was talking to my husband and because we added that vinyl fence, we're afraid that if we put the eyelets in there, just like I, I don't know if you could see this. I'm going to show you this. We've had eyelets before where I had a um, mandevilla here, but see that goes right into brick and that's okay. But I feel if it goes into the vinyl, it might compromise the strength of the vinyl or just break it down or crack within time because the sun is constantly hitting here. So uh, I might get a couple more trellises, like the black one that you saw for the miniature row. So we might do that, maybe three here. Kind of, like I said, break up that white wall. But that's what we've been debating um, to see how we could, uh, you know, adhere something to this vinyl fence without breaking um, or having it crack. So we'll see. I'll keep you guys in the loop once we find out. And then look at this. The Rose of Sharon. Um, it's a lavender chiffon and she just started blooming yesterday. I was so excited when I saw her. I couldn't wait for you guys to see her beautiful blooms and she's going to have all these blooms. Look at that. Oh my God. She's going to be just like a lollipop of lavender. So pretty. And then all my seedlings here that I literally just, <laughs> just threw some seedlings. I did, um, zinnias. Kind of a pink zinnias and i did hollyhocks a couple of hollyhocks down here that's a zinnia i think that's like a big bear white zinnia i did a couple of pink ones around here too so i'm waiting to see how those do um on the back there we have a veronica that's come up from last year so she's starting to bloom out her little purple flowers and then we have the pink penta right behind the blue pot so she's happy and that was from last year and they're and they're annuals here well they're supposed to be annuals but they're perennials in our area they love it here and so i took out the rinoculus and this is the first year i'm going to try doing this so i took out the rinoculus and all the corms i'm trying to dry out all the soil okay we i think we have better so you see all the corms i'm gonna try to store put them in storage kind of in a dark area and see if I'll be successful next year with um, ranunculus because these were the pink ones that I had in the healing garden. So I'm kind of excited to start this little science project to see if it works. I think so. Oh, wait, was that a moth? Oh, yes, it was. Um, so put those corms, I'm letting them dry out and then put them in storage. And then here's my blueberry medley of different fruits not just blueberries so we have blueberries right here and this is going to be raspberries and blackberries and look at that look at all these however i did see a bird sitting on the um on the fence eyeing them to come in and i had a couple of black ones of blackberries that were ready to harvest but he ate them so i hope he enjoyed them instead of them going to waste through the slag so um now it's about the Gist of my garden. Um, I do want to show you one of the projects that I just did that I'm really excited. And it's probably really simple to you guys, but for me it was a big deal because on the side of my house, um, that's usually where I keep all my fertilizers, all my um, uh, um, insecticides, my pots, my soil. And I am not lying. I was just starting to throw things on the side. And then the other day I looked at them like, oh my God, that was so bad. So I was at Home Depot and I'm like, okay, what could I do to put something on that area so it's nice and organized and just easy to find everything. My husband offered to make me a um, potting shed or not a pot, but a potting bench. <sighs> and I think that's a great idea. Thank you, hubby. But the only thing with that is I want him to like make it for me and then um, say, Ta -da! I made you a potting bench or a potting uh, shelf. But the only thing is that he would be calling me every five minutes. Could you go get me a hammer? I'm missing some screws. Could you go do that for me? And I know I'm being really selfish, but I didn't want to do that. I just wanted to be surprised and go, la, la, look what I made you. So I gave us free of a headache so we don't have to deal with that. And I assembled some shelves and I wrote, I uh, put everything in containers and I want to show you what I did. And I built it all by myself. Yes. So let's come on over here, guys. 
so this is the side of my house. It's a very small area where we're able to put everything at. So this is what I did. I bought a, I think this is like not plywood, some sort of wood, I don't remember. And I had them cut it at Home Depot so I could just lay it on top so I could do all the gardening or if I'm potting something up. And because it's been dewy, I've turned everything upside down so it wouldn't collect water. So I'm gonna stain this and I'm gonna be able to work. Look, potting all my little plants, fertilizing things, getting the fertilizers out. So I got like here, down here is all my insecticides. So that's all in a watertight storage container. And then all my fertilizers, my watering can, my small little shovels, and um, just some of my pots here. Look, and I did all by myself. I assembled this whole thing all by myself. So I was really proud. That was a big deal. I called my daughter. I'm like, Jay, come look, look what I did. And I was out here, I think from, I started about four o'clock to, I think I finished about 8.30. But I was so excited because it's so organized and it's so easy to find everything now. Instead of digging and finding spiders, which I don't like, um, and just looking down now and seeing everything that I have there. So that's what I did a couple days ago. Um, I want to show you now the front part of my garden. So remember, I'm not doing much because there's a lot of things that are going to be getting torn out in the next couple of weeks. But I want to take you on that tour. So come with me, guys. Come on in, guys. So welcome to the front part of the house and part, part of the garden. So I'm not sure if you guys remember, but for you that don't, these dahlias were itty bitty tiny. Um, they're starting to come on out. Um, the only thing with this one is we're gonna have to move her because she's getting stepped on. So obviously I made a big boo-boo by putting her too close to the, to the um, sidewalk because she is now getting damaged. So I'll probably move her in the next couple of days and put her right in the middle here because we have a couple of dahlias. Well, we have this one, so wrong. I will not put her there. I'll probably put her here. Um, these were daffodils, so I'm just kind of waiting for them to, you know, recharge their bulb for next year so I could pull the leaves and um, just move some of the dahlias because they were a little too much crowded or I crowded them too much. And then here we got the salvia, the beautiful salvia. They're so vibrant this year. They're, I don't know if it's all the water we got, but their purple is so deep and they're usually not this deep, but um, they're loving whatever they're getting and I'm happy because I see all the bees and all the bumblebees and I love that. So you will see that my garden looks a little kind of um, not tended to much out here, but the reason why is because all these plants are gonna be moving in the next two weeks. So I don't wanna plant anything new. I'm letting any seedlings come out and do their things and um, just getting, you know, just the joy of seeing what's coming out this year. But um, sad enough, <laughs> they're all gonna be moving and I'm not sure how they're gonna deal with the stress of being, you know, taken out of their area. So um, that's why there's still some weeds. I do need to come and weed, but um, this is all gonna be redone. So all the pavers that we're gonna have done in the garage, pavers down um, the walkway, and having some planters put in and a big patio area here somewhere, kind of in the front of the window. That is what we're planning. But let me just take you a little quick around the garden so you could see. Again, please excuse all the weeds. Um, again, I'm gonna be, we're gonna be taking all these out to redo. I'm gonna make this garden bed. I'm gonna pull her out. So I'm gonna bring her in maybe another two or three feet so I could grow more flowers and then these are the icebergs easy beautiful color roses that are uh oh having rust so i'll have to come out here and spray them down and then this people call this a santa barbara um oh my gosh lavender or oh i'll have to link that i don't remember but these are all all the iceberg roses my husband just cut them all back because um, they all pushed the beautiful white um, roses and there was just so pretty. It was like a bount bountiful of white roses everywhere, just like little bouquets. But we have some issues, so we'll deal with that. 
and the ruffly daisies look at those how sweet those are oh my goodness they're so fun so fun a um, couple of dahlias starting to come up here so we have one here and that's a that's a crepe myrtle that's a little um bush crepe myrtle and then the dusty miller another um dahlia i'm not sure what color she is i totally forgot and then look at this little i think she was called lemon cake lemon lemon no oh, she was a couple years ago so she's like in that yellow daisy with the outer pe uh, petals white. Oh, so sweet. And another dahlia, a darker leaf dahlia. And she's a purple dahlia, so she'll be really pretty. Some pin cushions. And what do we have here? Another iceberg. So it's just really easy planting, nothing complicated, just things that kind of grow on their own. And another dahlia right here. And then, so more daisies here. They're doing good. Here's the peonies. The, it's the Itho peonies, and she was yellow. Itho peonies, so she was yellow, and she's done blooming, so I'll cut her back. And then these are all the limelight hydrangeas. And if you, like, see the video when I first started this channel 29 days ago, they were tiny. And I planted them in April and they were tiny. So they grow about six, six to eight feet tall. So I'm really excited to just kind of fill in this space here. And we have some cats, um, Nepeta. Cats meow or no? Cats, cats Nepeta? I'm not sure what that is. I have no idea. That just came up. So it's going to be, I think it might be a salvia. Of like a pink salvia. And look, look at that. Look, they're starting to put in the white blooms. So do you imagine these limelight hydrangeas up to like, well, okay, six, six or eight feet? It'll cover some of the window, but do you imagine, like, if you're inside the house, you're able to look out and just see this greenery and these beautiful balls of white flowers. So um, I, I can't wait. So that's, this is the first year I planted these. So these are brand new. I need lots of weeding to do um that little guy just left her there oh my goodness and she's a sedum she's an autumn joy sedum and another peonies artho peonies and another limelight hydrangeas look at those they're gonna be all blooming at the same time i'm so excited so i believe let's finish the front here and about six of those on this side and this side faces the side of the house faces the west side so we do get the afternoon sun but we do have the trees that helps kind of not be so direct sun on those poor um hydrangeas these guys are i think they're like maybe iron deficiency and these are another um these are the microphilias these are mother Teresa, like the ones in the back hydrangeas and Turning, actually, they're supposed to be white, but they're turning a little bit of pink. And then my calla lilies. They're doing okay. You know, so pretty. And look at these big, huge Rex begonia leaves. Oh my gosh, she's like a ruby. She's like a ruby color. Look at that. And then it's time for me. I actually I think I might. Go around in the next couple of days and shape all these shear them all up kind of trim them because they're looking a little shaggy here so they need a good haircut before the summer and before it gets hot so they don't burn and that's that's about it except i do want to show you this is my favorite tree this is my tree that right before i go out to work out this is my snack to get extra sugar and energy before my workout i grab a couple of these pop them in oh and off I go. I am not lying. I have two of these every day. And they help. Mm -hmm. Or every morning after my workout. So this is my kumquat. A little tree. And she's, um, I think she's about maybe 10 years old. She is really old. And she's still pushing great fruit. And so productive. And when she has blooms or when she has her little blooms the bees are just humming here 
and they're loving her. So yeah, that's the kumquat, the kumquat tree. So hope you enjoyed my garden tour. I'm so excited to have you guys part of this journey. I'm so excited and thankful for all of you and to be able to chat with you guys. It's been a pleasure every day to see all these comments. And thank you for joining me today. May God bless you guys. Have a wonderful day. Bye.